Hello. Welcome, <laughs> jewellery makers. We're in a different studio. I know, and it's just, it's really lovely. What a lovely space, lovely and cool. It and is. it's Oh, it's it nice, is. actually, to be working in here. And we are going to let our lovely Rachel complete, of course, your beautiful shrimpy. Shrimpy brooch. And then you yeah. were saying about maybe actually doing your jumping fish design, too. Yes, so we're too. going to talk through and make some of the little fishes as well. So we're going to make sort of um, two designs from from the uh, from the kits um, today so um, that's seahorse kits um, which I've used and progressed on to make the beautiful shrimp um, and the and the tumbling fish and those fishes can be used to make sort of individual pendants earrings and arranged in all sorts of different ways actually tumbling but fish tumbling I apologize <laughs> all this while you, you could have corrected me oh well, it doesn't really matter you can call it anything you like as long as it's got a fish in it no, <laughs> so it's definitely, got that. definitely yeah, got that definitely got that we'll take it away fish. my lovely right so we what do we do we got to the bit where we'd made the frames we've curled them we've hammered them we've talked about weaving and showed a little bit of the weaving, weaving technique and we talked about adding beads into the eye so we've got um, components ready for that um, now so what we're going to do next is talk about so just adding these bits together um, to build up the body of the of the little shrimp so um, we've got in this um, shrimp here you can see I've started to add in um, some beads into the nose and I'll quickly show you that um, how to do that and then mm -hmm. we're going to add it all in mm -hmm. so taking you can work with 0.4 millimeter wire or 0.25 and again 0.25 millimeter comes in the kit so you're, you've got everything you need to start up with that um, and take a bit of 0.25 millimeter wire and take a bit more than I've got <laughs> and I would work with about um, Gosh, you can work with about a metre on either side, um, or if you want to work with less, just add it in as you go. So yeah. if you're not comfortable working with long lengths of wire, so I've got a short length for for um, sort of ease of progression and things, and I'm working with a silver um, prawn because um, I haven't got my silver 0.25 millimetre wire. So may maybe make you see it a bit more easily anyway. So working from the tip of the nose to start to uh, wrap around the tip of the nose a little bit and then holding quite close um, to the tip of the nose. This one isn't hammered actually so and what I would also do before doing anything as well is also weave that tail. Remember I talked about weaving that tail in, in, um, in the uh, previous segment. So if you hammer it uh, Rachel yes. is, it, is it easier to weave onto? Well do you know what you only need to hammer the curls and the antennae and the rest of it I needed round so I haven't hammered the rest of it um, actually at all. You could hammer it with a nylon hammer because I don't want to flat I don't want to flatten where I'm wrapping. Okay. And the reason is because actually it's easier to place a neater weave around a round wire than a straight well, I suppose that wire. Makes sense, and it, yeah. especially if you're you know be beginning in learning. Mm -hmm. And also actually if you pull too tight around a ra uh, um, a, a hammered wire edge, especially when you're learning, you can break, the, you can fracture the wire because it's right. like a sharp knife surface. Okay. So I think I always make it easier on people and say you don't need to hammer, hammer this. Right. So just wrap around the edge, and um, I'm going to cheat a little bit and just say, um, we'll work on this one. So I, what I did, I added in a little three millimeter bead with a crisscross, and then a a four millimetre bead. I think they're two, they're really even two and three. There's some fantastic different sizes mm. in the kits. Again, each, every single one has the right beads that you need to make up these designs and they are beautiful to work with. Um, and then I worked around either side and added the larger bead just to fill that nose. But you could always weave it, you know, with, a, with that basket weave that we had before. There's all sorts of different ways you can fill that space. But I just want to add the beads in. So at the stage where we can start to think about adding the eye, so you can see I've got, I'm just going to make sure that I'm on the right side, because these, these have been sitting in a box for a while, um, that I've got the wires around the right way. Um, I've sort of got two wires around the same side, which I don't really want. Right, so one wire this way, one wire at the top of the head. I'm going to work with the wires at the bottom of the head first and we're going to start to trap these antennae into place because you can see they move around a bit and actually they're quite mobile. So what I'm going to do is wrap the 0.25 millimetre wire which I'm working with. Again 0.4 is just as easy um, to work with um, and around this top antennae and the frame 
and you can see the lengths I'm working with. So as, I, I'm, as I'm working with these lengths of wire, I'm pulling them out and straightening with my fingers to avoid any kinks. You see that? So I gently pull on the wire and pull it out to avoid, avoid kinks. So I've now trapped that first antenna into place. And um, the second, the other wire, we're going to now, we're just going to work both wires and add the eye into place now. So place it over. Um, the little head of the prawn. So you can see um, that I've got um, these little feelers, little legs coming out, these squirrely moving legs at the bottom of the, of the little um, head there and these other areas at the top. So I, what I need to do is have this, um, this section here really, really close to this little area here where there's a gap and I'm going to pass the 0.25 millimeter wire, and it depends on, um, you can pass it from the front or the back, it doesn't really matter, but what we need to do is just trap this into place, pull it gently through, and you've got to make sure you're passing the wire through the base of the little hemicircle, and again this, this, this is the part where everything tangles up, and you've just got to keep calm when that happens, and just make sure that you gently, gently move everything out of the way and avoid tangles. So you can see I'm working with the wire just to make sure I avoid tangles before I do that final pull of everything into place. Now you can see I'm pulling that wire into place and that eye is starting to fix into place. And bring it around once more and perhaps go about three times through this little area. Um, I'm going to just pass it through once more. So again, thread it through the side of the bead here, below the crisscross wrap, at the base of this hemisphere, and pull the wire through at the back. Again, pull everything out of the way. Make sure you avoid kinks and, and bends in the wire, and pull through again. And this time, I would, I, would avoid, I would actually perhaps do another of those straps, do a third one to really secure that iron to place. But I'm just going to show you just the next stage of just wrapping around this antennae and the frames to secure this section in place. And you've also got to make sure this um, sits um, either above or below. I think you can make it above the other frame. So you've got some frames just to make sure that are lined up when you do this next, next section of wrapping. So wrap around all the frames here to start secure this section in place. Okay, there. And I, I could work all the way along here and make sure <coughs> you also wrap around these little legs around through the loop just in the same way you did that edge of the eye and until you reach this section here, the, the edge of the cheek. And also with this one we're going to use that top wire to attach this, this other eye bead, um, the surround eye bead, in the same way. So passing from the back of the frame around all the frame, all the outer frames, the one millimetre wire frames, into that little flower shape. You can see there's a gap. If there isn't a gap, just move the bit, be a little, just to give yourself a little bit, bit of space. You can see I've started to attach that into place now. So that's the. Um, this is a chance also um, to to move this around and make sure you've got this in the right place before you finally secure that up. So um, that's, I'll show you where we are with this stage. You can see what I've done. I've attached the, the I-bead in place. I'm just going to untangle these wires because, they, again, this little um, shrimp has been sitting in a box um, waiting to be, uh, you know, as a stage. So the eye, the, normally these wires would not be as crumpled. So I'll just take some time just to untangle those. You can see I've worked along the base of the face, attaching to these sections of the eye and to the leg sections to really secure that into place. I've also secured the top bead of the eye of the eye here. And you can see I've used the, the wonderful um, silver metallic beads um, around the eye with a lapis in the middle, so that's one of the other kits you can use, um, which is beautiful too. And I've got to a point where I can do some little uh, some weaving to attach these antennae into place because they're still, we want to make these really strong sections that you could attach um, a necklace to if you wanted to. So I want these really strong and not too bouncy around. Um, if you're just putting this into a photo frame, you might you wouldn't need to maybe attach these these points, but I do on this. 
So moving this into position, you can see I've got a kind of weave here where I'm just attaching to all the different frames um, with a kind of pattern. So the first part of the weave is around um, the lower antennae, which ends up being, well, so the inner antennae, which ends up being at the top, um, and the, uh, the head frame. And you do that three times. One. And make sure the wraps lie next to each other. So you can see I'm doing maybe three times with that one. And then pulling it round three times, making sure the frames lie side by side. Now that, that you can you can do different patterns now. You can either wrap all three frames, but I'm actually going to do different pattern. I'm going to wrap in between this one and use some pliers just to push these frames to get these wraps together to make them neat. And I'm going to trap now this into uh -huh. into place. One, um, two, three. Just make sure you push these together with your fingernails or gently with pliers. You, if you're using 0.25 millimeter wire, you can fracture it. So be careful when you're using pliers. But if you, you know, I do that too. Uh, my fingernails are in dreadful state. So actually, if you want to avoid your fingernails being as dreadful as mine, use pliers. Now I'm going to wrap around the head frame again, make myself a little gap here, and then pull this in between. So that starts to lock these attachments in place, make this really secure, as well as being quite a nice detail. You can al also wrap beads on with this wrapping as well. There's all sorts of different things you can do. Another thing you could do is cut sheet metal um, into the little carapace and attach it. So remember, you can progress with the design and do, or you can add beads in. You can do all sorts of different things. So um, working with this now, we're almost at a stage where we can start to attach this into place. So you can see I've got this wire ready at this base of the face, and I've got the wire nearly at the point where I want to be able to attach here. So actually what I did, I'm just going to quickly go along. I work with the base wire first, because that's the one I really want to have in position. Uh, actually with this, I, I went up. Can you see, I went up and did another set of weaves up and, up and down here. Another set of two to the top, just around the antennae, and two to the head and the lower antennae, um, just to increase that pattern. Okay, so I've only got had time to do one of those little um, sequences. So you can see, I've just done a, a few more along this one. So now I'm just going to go and just um, cheat a little bit and wrap around to the cheek. Um, and as you do this, you can you need to perhaps also um, make you can actually attach that very last eye section in here. Can you see that very last one is unattached here? So I can start to pull this into position. So push this all into position now, so it's attached. You can see that doing that with. 0.25 millimeter wire. It's surprisingly strong. Just, just be. You, you can't. You can put it, but you can't put it for too long. But you can actually mm. produce quite a strong link. You can see how I'm producing quite a strong link as I build up these wraps into this area. So I'm now at a stage where I can wrap uh, or attach the little segments, the tail segments in. So I want to, as I, th I started saying earlier. I want to attach the base or the inner side first because that's the most important side to fit into the curve. Um, and the outer side, it doesn't matter as much. You can attach any stage or any point along here if it, if it isn't quite fitting properly. You can make sure that um, this, um, um, it, it doesn't matter. At this line of attachment doesn't matter as much as getting the, the bottom line attachment right and correct. Mm -hmm. So um, place this over. You can see I've woven these tail fins and this sits over this should sit over like so and you've got this bottom um, segment to work with um, so what we can do is just wrap around um, I can go inside the cheek maybe because that's quite a good point that's a really good point of attachment to stop that everything traveling down because I'm attaching it inside the cheek so it's the, that tail isn't going to pull down this attachment is a really secure point to attach the um, the segments together. So you can see now what I'm doing. And the rest of it's actually quite simple really. So I've got this look, you can see now attaching this point into place. There we go. Maybe you can do as many as you like here. You can attach a bead if you like um, and just wrap around this point. And you can see now that started to be looking, looking a lot more secure 
actually already. And then you can turn this piece over and start working from the back because it's easier to see where you're wrapping. So pass the wire in at an easy point. So it doesn't have to be close to where you're actually wanting to wrap. So this is quite an easy point. I'm scooping the wire around this lower part of the tummy and, and then pulling the wrap round into where I want it to be. And you can see I'm going to wrap along this lower or inner tail frame. You can reshape it if you like at this point if it's got distorted. You can see, oh gosh, that, is that a bit distorted? Let's move that around, look like that, and it'll, it'll fit into place, so adjust things a little bit. And pretend that what I need to do <laughs> is wrap along this all the way around. And I need to do a few more wraps here, really, but I'm going to show you just what to do. Pretend I've got to this point. You need to wrap to this point and then pass this through this section here properly without crinkling the wire. If you find the end of the wire is too ragged, just trim it off and the straight end of the wire is um, much nicer to work with. That's why I always work with long bits. I can trim the ends off as I go. Or we can add new bits of wire in. So you can see I've wrapped around here, turn the piece over, and I've caught it in between the bend of this little carapace or tail segments, and then round. You can see I've pulled that into place and do this a couple of times. And you can see really that's actually all we need to do for the rest of the shrimp now. So um, if I go through the finished shrimp, shrimp and talk it through, you can see what I've done. So what I've done is I wrap all the way along mm -hmm. this inner tail, attaching that bit first, wrapping in between these little segments and wrapping to the back. You can see that little wrap back now, or sorry, the tummy really. Then when I reach this, either you run out of wire or you can add a new bit of wire in. And you can just put a silver bead, I put a silver, wrapped across a silver bead around that tail to secure that bit together. Then I wrapped all the way along I, um, the top of the, top of the back, I suppose. And you can see it's not as important to have this as a regular, um, you know, it doesn't have to fit um, the back as, per as perfectly because all I've done is wrap round and through these little edge bits, catching the frame. And just make sure when you wrap, you, you snap the wire in between the wraps already in place. You'll hear it little click as it, as it as it's almost like an invisible wrap. You can't even see where I've wrapped. Um, but those, the, as I've wrapped around here, I've just caught it, these little frames, and come back up to the top. And then um, we can just talk a little bit about the brooch pin, if you like. Um, mm -hmm. Let's do that. And then you can make a brooch pin for the back. Yes. So brooch pins are fantastic, and you can add them into all sorts of things. So say you've made the owl or the frog or anything like that, or dragonflies or anything like that, um, you can make a brooch pin to fit on the back. And um, I've got a template for the brooch pin, which I will attach. I'm just looking at the frog. Yeah. So you could turn you could turn him into um, brooch. into a brooch as mm, well using yes. this same technique. Or onto the onto a hat pin, or, or you know anything like that. It's a scarf pin because oh, um, as long as your the your material you're putting onto isn't too fine. Um, a one millimetre is great, like a woolly scarf or a sort of jump or something like that. And once you get to finer stuff, get down to 0 0.8 or yeah. something like that. You're not going to want it to ruin your best silk blouse or no, anything with it. Yeah. But um, there. So um, I've made this as a curved brooch, brooch pin. You see that? Sorry, I'll, I'll put that up. You can see a little curve to the back. And so don't think brooch pins always have to be um, straight. You can make them to curve around a brooch. Brooches are great because mm. you can make asymmetric shapes. You can make shapes in any direction. You have to be more careful when you make a pendant for make it uh, balances in a different way. W a brooch, you can actually go to town on your design with form in all directions. Love and that. It's, it's a really nice, nice um, piece of design to do. So brooch pin there is there will be a photograph of a brooch pin that will fit exactly the same size as will fit the um, shrimp brooch on the mm -hmm. oops, on the template so you can see that there so it's about gosh two um yeah the, the actual brooch itself is about three and a half centimeters in length yeah, yeah. just shy of two inches Perfect, thank you. Total. Absolutely, thank you. So I've probably taken too much wire. I reckon you can get away with about 20 centimetres of wire. So I'll cut that down. And use round those flowers first of all. And start to make a, a 180 degree loop around the base of the round nose pliers. 
Uh, depending on how big you want this loop to be, a smaller brooch, you can actually go further up and make that little loop smaller. So, yeah, and a larger one go down to the base. Um, it just it's your hinge really for the for the brooch. And you can see how I'm gradually stretching this or stroking on this wire and reinserting the wire around then stroking along and then you can see I've made these nice and straight from being curly so just I'm actually quite firmly stroking along this wire and then that actually becomes a really nice um, straight section coming out from the brooch pin here so now we can work with these to make the the um, mechanism of the catch so this can be any point along here, um, depending on your size, your design. So you know, uh, just place it, place this section over the prawn, <laughs> and make sure that okay, that's where I need to make the catch, for example. But this this should help you because it's it's right for this design. But when you're doing your own design, you'll just need to place it over and think, oh yeah, that's quite a good place to attach this bit, and that will come up for the catch there. So just a oh, the final thing, just for this little hinge, just also this loop, just squash it very gently. You don't need to hammer or anything like that. Just to squash that little hinge together. Now you also need to think about where your, your catch wants to be. Do I want this catch to loop this way or that way? Um, so looking at this wire here, if I want this, this wire to be the top wire, um, and this is on this side, I want the catch to eventually come over this way rather than that way mm -hmm. so it'll catch better. So placing this back over the diagram I'm just going to do and I want this up upwards straight upwards 90 degrees upwards and that will start forming that so catch and that's quite a sort of round bend um, and we can sharpen up a bend with several ways by clamping either side of the bend there and there so clamp and the clamp will start to make that bend a 90 degree bend not a curly bend and then clamp and clamp again. The more you clamp, actually the tighter you can get that bend to be. So it's a re it's a, it ends up being a really tight 90 degree bend by the end of all this clamping, compared to that sort of quite curvy bend you started off with. There we go. Okay. So back to the diagram, I'm just going to make a, a 90 degree, sorry, 180 degree bend backwards. So um, because I'm doing it over the diagram, I'm probably doing it a different way than I normally would, but I'm just going to check. Yes, I want this loop to come towards me. So I'm going to keep this out of the way. And then bend 180 degrees down. And this is the same, the same technique used for making prong settings, actually. It's quite similar. So this is good practice for making uh, really neat prong settings, too. So um, this is a really wide catch now it's a bit too wide isn't it I mean, you could use it like that but actually it's neater and stronger if you push it push it together a bit like a prong when you're making your prong settings so holding all this stable because it's going to move about you start to clamp with pliers at, t at the top are you looking yeah sorry can you see it are you looking for the overhead because I'm working to the overhead that's it um, clamp from the top and along and down and down a tip again, holding really close to where you want to clamp. Down and down and down and down. There we go. My nails are clean, they're just like metal working nails and they're, they're in an awful state. So you can see that um, um, is, has really drawn together now, that clamp along the side. I'm going to do a similar bend, really close to the other one, holding this because it distorts really easily. And, and I've got that 90 degree bend out. That's going to form a curly end to the catch and stop you um, having something that will catch on your clothing because that curl is going to protect you from the sharp end of the brooch pin. So I'm going to cut it about uh, two and a half centimetres from the end of that catch. And um, we're going to work with this. But I might first make this curly brooch pin catch before I do that. So first of all, um, I'm going to remember I want this to come over this way because this is the side of the of the, the brooch pin. But I'm um, first of all, and you can you can do that, but I'm um, first of all I'm going to make a little detail and just curl the edge away a tiny tiny bit. 
just a tiny bit. I'm holding really close to where I'm curling because the whole thing distorts really easily. You can see how that's distorted out, so bring it back into to line. Then grip close to where you curled outwards and curl it over this way and then move the pliers down and down. And you can see it has all distorted, don't worry because that's something you can work with and bring it back into shape. And I'm holding it really tightly here, bending here. Now this is all wonky and all over the place, so I'm going to actually make it straighter, clamp and clamp. And you can see that's now a nice little catch. You can, you can um, make this even tighter and bring it round a bit more. And look, that catch is lovely. So the next thing to do is make a little curl for here. But first of all, I just want to... Now I'll make the curl first and then we'll do the brooch pin itself, the actual sharp bit. Um, so use around those pliers to make a first curl, just like we did before, trim the end off. I always hold my um, hands over when I'm trimming so it doesn't, I've had bits go up my nose in the past and everything. Oh, gosh. So, you know, there's part of me that's, when I'm, when I'm finally cremated, there'll be a little pile of co copper dust <laughs> <laughs> at the bottom of everything <laughs> and a tiny little pile of silver dust. But there we go. Um, that is the curl. So I've made the curl with lovely rotation. And it's a loose curl too. So the next thing to do is just um, bring in the steel block and use this little hammer to start texturing, sorry, hardening and texturing this curl. So taking things off the edge of the block, I'm just gonna bang um, the edge of this curl. Make that nice. And then I'm going to clamp along this edge here. That starts to work harden it without doing too much to it. And then we're going to need to do this brooch pin. So you can either use a nylon hammer or you can use a really soft hammering of this. Really, really soft hammering. And that just work hard as that pin so that it's nice and literally starts to shock the molecules so they start to, to, to um, attach together with little bonds. Fascinating, isn't it, metal? <laughs> Who it knew? is, isn't it? I mean, it is a beautiful... I mean, we are... I'm touching metal the whole every day, aren't I? And it's just, yeah. you learn so much about it. So um, the next thing to do is make this brooch pin and the actual sharp bit. And this is the bit where um, you just, you don't want to trim too much off at the start because you don't, if you get it too short, it won't catch properly. So you really want the pin level to be about here so that you're protected by the curl and, but you've also got the catch. So I'm going to bring in this really, really at an angle. and really as, as steep an angle as you can. There we go. And I've made a sharp pin, that's sharp now. And if you want to, you can trim another bit with another tiny cut because that is a bit too long. So I've got, I've afforded a little bit more. So I can really, you can see how the steep angle that is. Hold everything over and then cut. cut. Now that's that, so you see how steep oh, yeah. that is? That you must throw away straight away because that if it gets in your in any anyone's foot, they will not thank you or I or anything. So yeah. that you've got to put that straight in the bin. So that's a really sharp little bit of metal. Sure. Oh, here that'll pop it in there. That's fine. Thank you. So now we've got, um, and then you can just file that with a little emery board if you want, just to to do that. And you can see either it's plated or coated rose co gold coloured wire. And, but it really cuts well and you've got that beautiful surface. You can see that's really quite sharp there. And that will fit now into that little catch. And you've got a brooch pin ready to attach to any piece of jewellery that you like. Um, just make sure. And you can curve this brooch pin mm -hmm. into shapes, you know, to fit your prawn or whatever. So that will fit along the back of the prawn. So what you do is you just wrap 0.25 or 4, 0.4 all along this this back, I suppose, the main strut of the, the brooch, and then you can basically attach it to the prawn at certain points. You can see the where I've, I've just wrapped also around the, the top of the back. Here, the, this hinge here, it's really important to try and catch it into that point here, and to catch it either side of this attachment, because that really locks into place and stops it sliding around. Mm. So this attachment is really important to wrap either side of this little loopy hook thing. Um, because then that really makes sure this 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 pin doesn't slide out and start sl slipping around on the design. 
So there it is, that's your brooch pin ready to, to use. Lovely. And just attach some little dangles, um, uh, little head, uh, little sort of droplets of water, whatever, from its little feet. His so, little feet. So there's the shrimp. He's so sweet. <laughs> He's so, so, so sweet. And I understand you very generously. Um, yes, there's two shrimpies. Um, the, I don't know where the other one's gone now. Oh, there he is. They're going to go in the giveaway, uh -huh. along with one of the seahorses. I'm going to sort of, um, choose a nice seahorse. I think this seahorse can come away, that one. So this, this seahorse is coming away, that, and, and the two shrimpies. Oh, the, you're very generous. I mean, so, <laughs> by the way, that giveaway, um, if you're shopping mm. with us at Jewelry Maker, anything over £20 literally gets entered into the draw, and that is constant mm. entries as well throughout the course of the birthday celebrations. Mm. Love, Shrimpy. Yeah. Now, we <laughs> have until approximately half hour, and you said you could possibly do, do squeeze in fishies. something else. Yes, I think we could do work through uh, making uh, one of the fishes to fit into this necklace, if that's okay with Here you. Here it is. Yes, please. Please so, do. Um, what we're going to do is, shall we take it off the bust or do you want to keep it on the bust? Sure, well I'll let... If you've got um, a shot of it, yeah, and then you, can, get, uh, you can then bring it that shot back up again whenever you're, um, you need to. I'm just going to get the template, which I've got as well. Isn't that beautiful? They look yeah. like little kois, little koi carps. Well, yes, and they are, well they are sort of that, when you see them swimming in the pond, they all swim in a, in a shell, don't they, all mm -hmm. around each other. That's the effect I wanted to give. It and is gorgeous. Again, using all the spare cabochons from the kit so you can see how many I had just to sort of just to be extravagant with and just um, make um, this necklace so I'm going to lay it out on the mat so you can see if you screenshot this and I will put photographs up on the the web as well mm -hmm. so you can actually put this together but these these little fishes you can see that on the big shot lovely lovely these little fishes can be made in left and right mirror image um, so again, I'll give you a template for the left and the right. Um, for this design, I only need to make one in one direction. I think all the rest are in the set other direction. Mm -hmm. So you can see all these, you can see how you can make them in different um, orientations. Those in a little swimmy circle, or you can do a, like a Pisces sign with both the fishes either side, mm -hmm. you see. Or you can do dangles, or, or all swimming around in a, in a design or, or two earrings mirror image so you basically make a whole load of fishes and play around with the patterns of how you'd like to to put them together so Fabulous. once you made one fish you can just use the design so this is just simple jump rings linked together with a very simple clasp which you can make yourself and I put plenty of those in my booklet so if you've got um, one of my booklets you can probably put together a clasp there and jump rings too um, and I think that's it they're just linked together with five millimeter and seven millimeter external diameter jump rings at different points again I can put that up as a picture on the um, on the web with showing which jump rings go where as well at a later stage you will have that to refer to okay. you will also have this template and I think oh yeah, that one. Um, I haven't put that one on because I was going to do one with big cabochons but I just ran out of time um, but this is the one with the the little one um, the little one that you can use for this necklace so you can see that that template there's three frames um somewhere <laughs> there we go here they are and i'm going to lean over sorry lovely that's all right um and they are the main body frame they're all made with 0.8 millimeter wire again that's all in the kits again really important those kits are just perfect you can make the seahorses you can make the shrimps and you can make um, the fishes yeah yep, and perfect. you will have so much um you don't have enough to do it you see um, all made with 0.8 millimetre wire. So let's make the little body of the fish first. I've taken step by step pictures of the that's point six, the, uh, of um, some of the stages so that we run out of time I can put them on. But okay. I'll do as much as I can because actually the movement of making those frames is quite important. So the longest frame is the um, fish body. And we're going to use this template here. I'm going to move this slightly out of the way. Maybe put that back on the, on sure. the bar. Sorry, lovely. And then what I'm going to do is take about a 30 centimetre um, length of 0.8 millimetre wire. And we're going to make this little lips of the fish first of all. So grab um, the wire and with a uh, chain nose pliers and make a bend um, at, for the mouth. And then... Um, 
these round nose pliers to make each little lip, little little mouth lips. And they're really good points for Those attaching. Those beautiful little pocket lips. <laughs> yeah. They're really good points for attaching jump rings and things like that. So these will be a po attachment points that you can use for your designs. So you can see I'm pulling the the lips, um, the yeah, the mouth around the round nose pliers. Now you can see that is too wide. That doesn't fit into place. So we're going to do, need to do some adjustments um, to make these a little bit smaller. So what I'm going to do is first of all make that bend a bit sharper, and then I'm going to also grip quite close to that bend and pull. You see, I'm pulling that little loop smaller. I'm going to do the same on that side. Uh, you could also make them really small on your, on your chain nose pass, the round nose pass to start with. But if you get it wrong, this is a way of actually adjusting that size. Can you see? I've really pulled it round to make a little heart shape. And you see those fit a lot better now onto the template. Um, I know I'm using a lot of overhead shots at the moment. So the next thing to do is um, we're going to start making the body. Each side of the body is pretty similar, so I'll just show you one side. So um, grip at the sort of base of the mouth near with the chain nose pliers. I'm doing a lot of these bends with my hands, so you don't do quite a lot of the bends. You don't use the pliers for you. Use your actual hands to to manoeuvre it, and that's one way you avoid marking wire. So look, uh, that little dint, that little click, is where I mark the wire. <laughs> that's things you don't want to do. So I've made that flaring out at the, at the lip, look there. And we're going to just ma make this body shape. So again, working over the diagram, pulling round, and then what I'm going to do is just flare this tail out. There we go. And then start to just um, make that fin. That fin, you can see, is quite rounded here, and I want to make this sharper. So we do, remember those sharpening techniques. You can do two things. You can, you can um, clamp either side of a bend to sharpen it, or you can clamp inside the bend. Remember that clamping inside the bend we did for the brooch pin? And that's another way of sharpening up a bend. So clamp, clamp, clamp and then squeeze either side. And I've sharpened up that bend to a much sharper bend, you see, than I had before. So that fits into that dolphin tail, that, that lovely whale's tail or fish's tail that we have. So gripping now, quite near this inner, inner um, section of the tail, all I'm doing is literally, it's so easy, you just pull it round and you've got that cav uh, for the outside edge of that tail. And you do exactly the same, but really a mirror image for the other side of the fish. So you end up with a frame that looks like that. So you can see that, like so. So you've got the outside edge of the frame. Again, I'll put pictures of these up on Facebook for you. So next frame is the eye frame. Um, so a short a little bit of 0.8 millimetre wire um, is, let me have a little look. What are you looking for? 0.8, there we go. Oh. There we are. Um, and I'm using just like 10 centimetres, maybe 12 centimetres. Let's go and no. I'm being over generous with the wire because I, I just want you to make it and not run out of wire. So I think you could probably get away with 15 centimetres of wire. And uh, if you've made the body and you've got some extra limits of wire either side of the body, you might be able to make this, this um, eye fin from that, eye portion from that. That could cover the cabochon. So this is a cabochon covering frame as well as being an eye detail. So round the base of your chain nose, round nose pliers, round nose pliers, form a circle. And this is going to fit your eye bead in. Um, and we're going to use one of those beautiful um, copper eye beads from the kits. And they're, they're just so perfect. And they fit inside that little, that little um, circle nicely. Is it drawing around? But there we go. I'll put that back now. So um, that's that. So I'm just going to flare this outwards. Again, I'm just going to do one side because they're both exactly the same. So then gripping at the top of this circle, pushing outwards, and then shaping over the diagram, just making sure you've got these curves. Now these curves, it's like an S-shaped curve, are going to fit over the cabochon. So if you've got a deep cabochon, you need to make these prongs smaller, uh, sorry, longer. And if you've got a shallow cabochon, you can make these prongs shorter. Mm -hmm. And these are the ones I've designed for the ones in the kit, which are actually quite deep little cabochons. 
actually in the grand scheme of things you can get really flat ones can't you yeah but these are because we've got yeah, the yeah. dome so these will fit over the ones in the kit so this is designed for the the kit the kit uh, cabochon so uh, with that in mind so you can see me just making these sinuous bends like, like so and do the same on the other side until you've got this shape that fits over that purple line so that's that one so you've got the body we've done the body and now we're just going to do the fins and this fin shape acts also as a cabochon backing frame so it will sit um, either side of the body and that back of that middle bit sits underneath the cabochon to keep it in place so again 0.8 millimeter wide we can use a little bit of a longer piece um, 15 20 centimeters something like that and just make a little bend in the middle and we're going to use the light blue turquoise line on the diagram and again I'm just going to do one side of it because they're both pretty similar on either sides so um, and Rachel, these mm. templates you said you were going to put online, do you mean on your Facebook page? On Facebook, and on the Jewellery Maker Share Your Makes page. Oh, wonderful. So it'll be in the there main group go. page. There we go. You'll have it there, and I'll put it also on my JM Designer page too. So, you know, depending on how you access, um, w and, but actually, please be a member of the Jewellery Maker Share Your Makes page, um, because it's a great, uh, there's a great um, community, and quite a lot of people will, will help. Help, help, yeah. You know things like that, and we try and pick up things um, from there. And sometimes I see posts, designers po see posts on there that you're tagged in, um, and other people tag me if someone's asked a question. Just Yes, because yeah. then because our messages, when we're looking at our own pages, we don't sometimes see all the messages. Cause no. it's because we're looking from page to page. So it's easier to actually see it on the group on that. I agree, yeah, yeah I do Seriously. agree. Um, so round here, I've gone done that like a little I don't know what it is, what shape that is. It is a shape <laughs> that fits in the back of the fish. And then I'm gonna make this fin on this side. Again, it really unless you're making them all the same, if you're just making one, it doesn't matter. You can make that tail really big, you can make it all yeah. flowy, lots of fronds and all the different shapes. This is a basic shape for a fish. And you can make completely different shapes of the fins if you want to, because you can go your own way, look at different fish styles. You know, yeah. styles. This is a kind of basic form um, for a fish. So, again, always make sure when you're flush cutting, you've got your flat side to the Ooh, yes. flat end, because if you do the other side, you get a squashed um, conical tip. So, there we are. So, there's. If you do the same on both sides, you get your fins. And the next thing to do is curling and hammering. So you've got your three frames. If we go on the overhead, sorry, three frames. Um, the body, the um, fins, and the backing frame in the eye. So we're going to now progress to making them hammered or curled. So this is what we're going to turn them into. So we're going to turn them into curl components. I'm just going to do one to show you. Um, uh, because for time, because that is those curlings exactly the same basically. I think this one's the most important one because there's quite a bit of shaping to do around the fins. So let's do that one. So we're going to curl inwards, um, just a little bit actually. First of all, on either side. And remember, I curl first with the tip, trim the ends, and again have that practice of always putting your hand over where you're cutting. You, cat, you actually catch a little bit in your, in your hand each time and you save it, especially if you're saving every little bit of scrap silver, say you're working in silver. And the next thing to do then is continue that once you've trimmed off the end, probably about halfway down, and then I want to work on the base of that um, wire tail as it, as, it, as it crosses the fin. So I want to make sure this bit is bent nicely so it fits inside the fin. So let's work on this one. You can see this is curly, so I want to, it's quite difficult this little bit. No, let's, it's, it's not difficult. Grip here and then push. So it's just awkward to put in your, um, thinking about where you put your plier tips, but just put them inside the fin here and then push that round and then grip. You see, I'm starting to grip that. So it fits over the other fin. And I think I probably haven't curled enough. So what I'm going to do is hold here at the base, insert the, the pliers and rotate and twist 
you can see me twisting that into shape inside mm. the fin a bit better. And you do the same with the other side. I'm going to do it very quickly only because you just need to just, um, just make sure these fit against each other. And having a curl there, rather than a, a sharp bend, is not very good because you need a, a sharp bend so that they fit quite nicely against each other at the back. I need that a little bit straighter. You can see how I've made that straighter. So clamp here, clamp here, and that's a straight internal edge here, and that tail will fit much better together. Can you see how that's started to, instead of being a curve, has gone straight. That needs to be straighter over that side of the fin, and that, that tail will fit together now much better as a form over the back of the fish. Similar things to these, this, this back end of the, fi the fin, just make sure that you do quite a sharp, sharp bend on this top one. And you don't have to be so sharp on that one, but it doesn't really matter. It'll be fine, actually, either, either way. It'll all, we'll all fit together nicely. It just makes, there's a difference between each side of the fins. It just has that sort of slight difference to it. So the next thing to do is just hammer this to show you. Um, oh yeah, with this one, you just curl outwards. Just a simple curl, just oh, with these wire them. tails. Oh, yeah, with these wire tails. Sorry, oops, Daisy. Yeah, I'm just. Um, yeah, with this one, you just curl the the wire tails outwards, mm -hmm. and you hammer the whole of this shape, except that circle. So you hammer these bits, but not the circle. With this one, you hammer the whole thing, but to hammer it, you just need to bend this outwards. Look, can you see? Bend these outwards then hammer it over a steel block, hammer it on the whole thing, more on the outer edge than the inner edge, you see more here than here, because you'll flatten that surface more, and I've, I've hammered this already, that's why I'm not doing it again, and then um, pop this back into place, okay, then hammer the, the uh, tail fins here, again what you need to do is pu push this outwards. You don't need to have any of the rest of it. It's just the tail and the lips, perhaps. Okay, there we go. So I bend that outwards, and I'm going to hammer that tail. I'm going to show you that technique of just hammering a little bit more on the edge. Okay, and the mouth, and then fold it back into place. So now we're going to join all these things together. So we've made tail, cabochon, and um, fin frame. For the fin frame, you just need to um, wrap to prepare it. You need to attach, if I do this, you need to um, attach a bit of 0.25 millimeter wire to the center bit and wrap all the way along the edge, trapping this little circle here all running on the top fin and trapping that little circle there. So that's mm -hmm. prepared, ready to add in. So just cut and trim it there. So that's done. Um, for the eye frame, we are going to, um, I'm going to flatten it out. So I didn't know how much time we had. So what we're going to do, you basically for the eye frame, you need to add in, um, ah, let's shape it first. Let's shape it first. Before we do adding in beads, We'll shape it. So I'm going to bend this this little portion downwards. That's the eye downwards. This is flat still. Rotate it. Hold this eye in, in position, and, and then twist to the side. So this is now going like that, and twist this one to that shape. And this this is going to fit round the cabochon for the little fishy, really nicely. So you can see now if I place the cabochon underneath it that it will fit into place. I've just lost my cabbage. There we go, I've got a section of one. This is one like that. So you can see it, it's not very not, not as close as it could be because the eye bead is going to be projecting here. So it doesn't have to be completely tight. It'll just fit around it. Okay. Um, once you've got that shaped, add in an eye bead in a similar way we did the um, wrap around the end here put a four, uh, one of those beautiful five millimeter metallic beads with a crisscross wrap, come up here, put another, uh, attach another bead to the top, and then wrap along to the side of the, this covering frame here. Um, 
on that side. So that's what you need to do. So now we need to attach everything together. Okay. okay. Do you need this little fishy that well, I've been holding? Well, I'm just trying to work out. So basically, um, what I'm going to do is just show the, I've got the three stages now. I'm just going to basically start to attach them together. So I'll take this out, no, I'll keep the white background. So a bit of 0.25 millimetre wire mm -hmm. and we can start away. Basically once um, I've done this first bit, the rest of it we can talk through, but it's just showing little techniques of things as we go, I've got, I've got quite good stages. So I'm just going to attach one bead into the, um, the mouth at the top. So I'm going to wrap a couple of times around near the lips and you can actually just, if you feel this is um, spayed a little bit, use chain nose pliers and just compress this little area here just to press the mouth together five minutes and then wrap this over here. And remember how we attached the eye, the um, shrimpy eye, we're going to do a very very similar thing to attach the um, the eye for the uh, the fish. So I might just talk through that bit. So you can see you attach the bead to the, st the start of this and make sure, oh dear what am I doing, um, <coughs> Pass the bead one, pass the wire once through the bead again, but I haven't got time to do that, so I'm just going to go front of it. Um, do that anyway as well. So pass it through the bead and then wrap to the front of it to trap it into place like a little frame. And these two wires are ready now to attach the eye bead into place. And you can see, remember how we attached the shrimpy eye into place? I'm going to use those two wires to wrap into the eye. I'll show you that next stage, which I've done. See what I've done is I passed that wire through um, either side of that, that front bead that we had, through that eye, attached it in and wrapped up the side of the fish, either side. And to give you the right level to wrap up to, it's exactly the same level on the diagram here where the, fi the fins are. So just use that template, oh I'll wrap up to there, that template where the fins come out of the, of the diagram there. So that's where you wrap up to on either side so you can wrap the fins on. Next thing to do is place the fins under the fish. Um, just make sure you've got it correctly. And thank you. And then use, you can see now how you can just use these wires ready to attach the fins into place. Wrapping around all the frames and just wrap as many times as you can. There, I've only done one, but you can see it's already starting to attach into place. Look, just with one wrap. And on the other side too. So wrap at least three times I would. Um, to attach that into place. Uh, this stage you can, so I'm trying to think where I am with everything, you can see now that you've got that um, setting into place and this stage you can just set uh, practice just where your how your cabochon is, is going to sit. So you can see you've got a nice covering frame and you can try with different cabochons into the into the frame there, look, that will fit in quite nicely. Can you see that slips in quite nicely? And you can use smaller ones, it doesn't matter because you don't have to have it perfectly fitting inside this little fish. You can have gaps, it really doesn't matter. But it's already fit into place. Now, what that. I did was actually work with this like this um, with the cabochon in place because it was just easier and it's held everything in place for me. Then, what I did was I wrapped along, I've got this one, I'll show you what I did. I wrapped along the side, this one's a smaller one, you can see it's not quite perfectly fitting but again I don't really mind. And I wrapped along the side, wrapping the inner part of the fin to the, um, to the side of the um, main frame and the same on the other side. And this side I've also um, bound around this cabochon curl as well and I'll just show you that now. So also when I got to this stage here, which I hadn't done here, um, I wrapped around, it's really important this bit actually which I should have done, going back to this stage, I wrapped around the backing frame in that little loop at the backing frame, passed it up through inside the cabochon frame and trapped, and again this is important why we've got this cabochon in place, 
because I need to make sure that the tension is right and doesn't sit too tightly. Otherwise, if this is too, if you don't, if you do it without the cabochon in place, which is what I did first of all, you often get the setting too tight and it won't fit properly. And you have to go for a smaller cabochon. Can you see how I've gone around all three frames? I've done the this little bend in the cabochon frame, the main frame, and the backing frame all in one. Right, okay. So what, and you can see you do that on both sides. So here, I've wrapped around here and here. I then progress to wrapping around all the way up the side of the fish, trapping in these little curls. And then we talk through one of the main fishes. We'll just talk through what we have to do for the final bit. So uh, let's choose this one here. What I've done is, again, I've wrapped all along the side. And then what I've done, I've got two wires here at the end when I've got to this final bit. And I've wrapped also to the backing frame here. There's loads of wraps around here to, to cinch it all in together. Then put in a, one of the larger beads of the crisscross wrap and then another little bead as well. And then cut one of the wires and just use one of the other wires to weave or wrap along this fin and then attach a little bead at the end. And that, that's it really. So, I think, so that's the fish made. So um, wrap along the side of the fish, make sure you trap these sides of the cabochon, make sure you trap to the, wrap to the back of the setting as well, attach in beads and then wrap to the tail and you're finished. Amazing <laughs> and you, you can make all these little fish and obviously then put them all together. Yes, yes. How yes. much fun has this been? Yeah, I'm bringing yeah. you a little, uh, a little uh, takeover with our wonderful Rachel. Rachel, Thank it's you. a joy Thank to you. see you. Thank you. And bless up, you've been signing some of your copies have, as well which um, will be... 50 copies all signed and um, ready to go and yeah that would be lovely. Thank Literally, you very much. Literally you'll get those at everybody. random. Well you're yes. amazing, Thank you really you. are. Thank you. Um, yeah. thank you so much for joining us and thank you, thank you. of course. Thank you as well. You've been such a, such a lovely support to me actually, especially when I was a bit tired earlier on and Elle's fantastic. Oh bless your heart. Thank Listen, you. have a wonderful afternoon yeah. everybody. Rachel Norris, mm. we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. There.